Hey, what up guys? I've been playing around with the Google Sheets API a lot these days and I just think it's so cool how we can use Google Spreadsheets for some basic backend. So to demonstrate this, I made a sticky notes app, which is a simple app that lets you post a small note. And most importantly, the data will be saved into a Google Spreadsheet. The main idea I want to teach you in this video is the ability to store data and also the ability to retrieve the stored data and display it in your app. I highly recommend you first check out my recent video on how to connect Google Sheets to your Flutter application because that's where I'll be starting from. Open up a brand new Flutter page and we're going to delete everything below the main function so that we can start from scratch. I'm going to check the debug banner to be false and let's create a home page. And the home page is going to be a stateful widget. And make sure to go to your main.dart file and import this new home page. Now make sure that you've got the dependency package for the Google Sheets, which you should already have if you're coming from the Google Sheets video. And we're going to create a new file called Google Sheets API. And so in here, where we left off from the last video, the two things that we grabbed was the credentials and the spreadsheet ID. And so we did some of this basic initial work in the Google Sheets video. So make sure to check that one out first. So in the main function, make sure to initialize the Google Sheets, which will run this method. And this will initialize our worksheet. And for the worksheet, if you go to the actual Google Sheets, and so you can name this whatever you like, but I just named it worksheet one. And so that's what the code is trying to find. Now in the scaffold, let's make the background color be a light gray. And for the body, we're gonna have a big column. And for the children, I'm gonna use some expanded widgets. And just so that we can see the UI, let's make it a darker gray for the top section. And for the bottom container, we're going to place our text editing controller. So I'm just gonna put a text here so that we can see uh, where exactly on the UI I'm referring to. You can see at the very bottom, so we're gonna use a text field widget. And in the hint text, we can say enter, give it a border. And for the suffix icon, which is the one towards the end, I'm just gonna put an icon called clear. And this one specifically, we should get the icon button widget so that we can have an icon as well as this on pressed function. And so you can see the X at the end of the text field. And so when anyone presses that, we're going to want to clear it. Now below this text field, we wanna create a small button so we can post the note. There it is, I'm just gonna make the text color white. And also let's just put a little branding. And of course, make the button more round. Now let's spread out the row a little bit. So in the main axis alignment, let's go space between. And let's just add a little bit of padding and let's separate it out into a button.dart file. So I'm just gonna copy it all in into this file and and let's create two variables to pass through. So the child and as well as the function. Which means we're gonna to need to wrap our button with a gesture detector and on tap, we wanna execute the function. Cool, so let's come back here and create our button. Makes our code nice and clean. And if we hit the button, the function I want to call is, let's call it post. And so let's create our method up here as well. And in our text field, you can start typing in there, but for us to be able to access this information, we're gonna to need to create a text editing controller. And if you go to the text field, you should see the controller option which means now if we click the suffix icon, which is the X at the very far right, um, the point of this is to clear what's already in there, right? So if we hit this X button, we wanna clear the controller. 
And just to show you how this works, let's print what's in the controller. So we might have to say dot text. And if I say hi there, of course you can see that they print out the information. So this is how you access the input from the user. In terms of just the decoration, you can see there's like a blue outline because that's the default color. So if you come back to our main function, let's create a theme. And what you want to control is the primary swatch. And you can make this whatever color you like, obviously, but for me, I'll just make it pink. Okay, now which brings us to the top section of the app. And here I want to create some sticky notes. So let's just create a controller with our text. So I just want to display the text that we input. There it is. Let's change the color to be yellow. And let's create a new file called textbox.dart and encapsulate the code. Cool. So obviously from this textbox class, we can't access the controller. So we're just going to create a variable text that we can pass through to this object. So there's my text box and let's just pass through our controller text. So if I have two of these, let's see what this looks like. Maybe add some padding just to show that there's two different ones. And so you can see there's hello in the two boxes there. Okay, so now that we've got that down, what I want to do is I want to place these in a grid. So it looks like these text boxes are really vertically long, right? So let's put them in a grid. I want to specify the cross axis count to be uh, four. So that's just how many you want in each row. You can specify that yourself. And we're going to need to also specify uh, how many of these boxes we want in our grid. So if I just use a fixed value five for now, then I can have five boxes in the grid. Cool, and then again, let's create a new file just to encapsulate this code. Let's call it notes grid. And just copy the code back into this file to make it cleaner. And same thing as the text box, we can't really access the controller from this class directly. So let's just create a parameter called text and we'll pass through the information like this. Also, we'd like to know the number of notes. So we want to be able to control this dynamically. And let's just create some text at the top. So just a little app bar. Make the color transparent and elevation zero. Cool, so the, the UI is basically all done now. Just some padding here and there just to fine tune the user interface. But I think that looks pretty good now. Now let's think about how we can add this to our, in Google spreadsheets, as well as being able to retrieve that information. So the first important method is this insert method. What we're going to do is we're just going to pass through a note and we're just going to append this note to the row. When we hit the button post, we want to now call the Google Sheets API and insert a note. And we know what note to put in, it's the controller. And let's just say we're just going to have one note for now. And if I put some text in, you can see that it shows up in the spreadsheet. Awesome. Second note also shows up. So I showed something similar in the Google Sheets video up until how to insert some values into, this, into the spreadsheet. And the big thing we're going to do now is to be able to retrieve this data back into our app. So to do this, we're just going to create some var variables to keep track of. So the number of notes as well as a list of the current notes that we have. And anytime this insert method is called, we're going to increment the number of notes by one. And also we're going to add the note to this list of current notes. 
which actually means if we go back to our grid, we can just get rid of all these variables. And for the item count, we can say Google Sheets API dot number of notes. So this can have a global way of tracking how many notes we have. And for the text as well, so Google Sheets API, and we created this list called current notes, and we just want to display all of that. The other thing is as we click post, we also want to clear the controller. And finally, once we initialize the state, you can add this bit of code, controller.addListener. And what this does is it just sets the state every time we type something new. So you can see now, if we enter our first note, we have a list to store this data now. And second note, third note, so we can see it just shows up dynamically. Now the problem is, what if you already have some data in there? Right, we already had the first hello and second note in there, so we want to be able to show that as well. So to show the existing data, we're first going to need to know how many rows that we have. So I'm just going to create this method called count rows, and all this does is it's just a quick while loop to just count how many notes we have in our spreadsheet. And then once we've counted that, we know how many notes we should load, and then now we can load them. So let's just say we have some dummy information in there. And for the load notes, we're going to do a for loop and go through the worksheet and collect the cell in each row, and we're going to add it to our current notes. So this should be all done as the app starts up. Okay, so let's test this, and it looks like, oh, we're getting a range error, index out of range. And this may be because of our grid. Let's go back to our grid. Yep, let's change this to current notes.length. So current notes is the list that we had, and we just want to display that many number of notes. Okay, let's try this again. And there it is. So these are the notes that we had in the spreadsheet before the app started, right? And now we can display them. Now one issue is we wanted we wanted to be able to show automatically as soon as the app starts up, as opposed to currently it's only showing up when we interact with the app. So to make it show as soon as the app starts up, I'm just gonna add this little timer just to know when we are starting to load. This is just checking every second if we are still loading or not. And so the reason why it's good to keep track of if we're loading or not. So let's create a Boolean and at the beginning, the loading is true. After we've loaded all the notes, let's say loading is false. So we've finished the loading and then we can cancel this timer. And we wanna call this method as the app starts up. Now, one really neat thing that we should add in is a circular progress indicator. So I'm just gonna create a new file called loading circle. And this one is using a widget called circular progress indicator. And basically what this does is it's just going to have a little loading circular motion. We might have to add an expanded widget to make this work. Let's see how this goes. So this is why the loading Boolean is really useful. So Google Sheets API.loading. Now if it's true, if it is loading, then we want to show the loading circle. And if it's false, then let's show the notes grid. Okay, so let's see how this looks. And that's the loading circle I'm talking about. So Looks like it's all scrunched up, so I think I need to just sort out this expanded widget situation. So let's just put this all in an expanded widget. And in each of the individual loading circle and, no and notes grid, let's just get rid of their expanded widgets. I think this should make it nice and clean. There it is. So this is really useful because it's gonna give the user an indication that something's happening, that they should wait a little bit before the notes get retrieved. Cool, so now we can load up the already existing information in the spreadsheet, as well as entering a new note. And you can see it's gonna be on the spreadsheet as well. And if we load this again, please load up all the information, there it is. That's all I have planned for this video. I hope you guys learned something, and I will continue developing this notes app so the next iteration should have the ability to select a particular note and edit it and so from there we could make a to-do list or just a full-blown notes app and that's going to be something that i'm looking forward to so that's it for this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one latest